Welcome along, welcome along to another Ski Sunday. Uh, this is Ski Sunday, where are we now? God, I think it's uh, 24. Uh, yeah, amazing. Thanks to everyone for um, sticking with this and uh, great to have you along. Um, and if you uh, uh, managed to come along on Friday evening for my release party, my Ski Sunday, not Ski Sunday, <laughs> my short circuits release party, then uh, thank you, it was, it was good fun. Um, I had some lights here. It was the evening in London. It was uh, it was great, and I played through the whole album. So you can watch it back. Actually, it was uh, it was muted on some channels. I think Facebook muted <laughs> every track, which is kind of a good thing because it means that the uh, it, it means the, the algorithms are working. Um, but not not muted on YouTube. Uh, so I've sort of re-uploaded it on YouTube, so you can watch it back there. Uh, but yeah. Nice to have you along, everyone. Um, so what am I going to be doing today? I'm going to be breaking down um, a track, uh, one of the tracks from my album, um, Eyelashes. And uh, it certainly seems to be one of the most popular ones, which is fantastic. So we're going to have a look at the Ableton project and kind of go through, go through all the parts. Um, and also kind of quite, yeah, exciting, you know, quite an exciting thing is I'm going to run a remix challenge. So I've actually bounced out all the stems or the parts of the track and I'm going to kind of keep this just for the Ski Sunday crew, uh, the people that are watching um, and as an opportunity to uh, kind of download those parts. Um, I'm going to share a link um, a little bit later um, and then, yeah, kind of, I don't know exactly uh, to what end it's going to be I think and I think it's more just like it's not really a competition it's more just like here you go here are the parts I have a go at remixing it and then in a few weeks time we can do we can do a similar thing that we did with my sample challenge uh, where we yeah if you can kind of submit them we can have a listen through and who knows you know maybe maybe we can actually release them I could put it out on my label or something so uh, yeah I'll uh, I'll be going through that in a minute um, but yeah, please feel free to uh, to join the chat. Um, if you haven't uh, come to one of these before, welcome along. Uh, it's great to have you here. Um, and yeah, just wanted to kind of say how happy I am that my album's finally uh, been released and uh, all the links are on here. Look, if you can kind of, well, it's, it's on my Bandcamp page. Let me just open that up. There we go. So you can buy it there. You can sort of preview all the tracks. Uh, it's also, uh, I've got one of these things here where it kind of lists everywhere that you can listen to it and, um, and download it. Uh, and it's great as well because on the, on the on iTunes, the Apple store, it's got the Apple, Apple Digital Master sign, which is brilliant um, because Simon Cotsworth, uh, who mastered the album, um, is kind of accredited with that. And uh, it's a real kind of honor to have that. Uh, you know, you have to be, do things to certain specifications. Um, and yeah, he did an amazing job. So I'm really, really grateful for that. So cool. Let's dive into this. Uh, I'm also kind of refining my setup now as well. So I've got another computer. Uh, so I'm, I'm kind of using a capture card. Um, so hopefully kind of avoiding the issues I was having a few months ago with my computer kind of crashing. So even, even if my, my, the, the laptop I'm using that's got the door on it, <laughs> like Ableton or Logic or whatever crashes, at least the stream will keep going and I can kind of uh, reboot. But hopefully it won't happen. Um, okay, so here's the project anyway. Um, and originally this track was called, well, from the start, it was called OBDA Beauty. And the reason I called it that was because there was a plugin that came out um, around the time I started it, which was, let me just see, uh, 2017. So the first file I've got is from 2017. So that's it, four years ago, uh, quite a long time. And the the plugin that came out, I think at the time it must have been called the OBDA, not the OBXD. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, but anyway, essentially it's uh, it was a plugin. It was a free plugin at the time that was based on the Oberheim OBX and. Uh, I installed it just to kind of out of curiosity and uh, ended up making a whole track out of it because I just thought it sounded so amazing. And I remember actually doing this 
starting the track literally just sitting on the sofa so not no keyboards in sight it was just using using the kind of computer keyboard and that's where i kind of came up with the, with the main parts of it and then then kind of left it for a while and then decided to finish it off this year um but yeah i thoroughly recommend that let me just uh let me just see if i can put that link in the chat hold on a sec uh because it's thoroughly worth checking out i don't know if you can get the free version anymore the sort of version one um but it's uh i'm sure there's a demo that you can you can kind of trial it with to sort of check it out so there you go there's the, there's the link to that um cool okay so here's the project um let's just give, give it a little play just to make sure it's working it's coming out yeah so all done in Ableton. Um, the only thing that's that's missing from this is uh, are my UAD plugins. Just because I'm using my uh, Apollo um, UA Apollo <laughs> to for the stream on the other computer. So um, that's my kind of next next stage is to kind of get another sound card so that I can actually use my UAD plugins. But I didn't use that many of them to be honest, and I've kind of I've replaced them with sort of similar sounding things. So hopefully that should be cool. Um, so yeah. I mean, I think what we should do is just kind of go through um, track, track. Maybe, maybe actually, maybe maybe let's listen listen through to the whole track, um, and I can kind of while while we're listening, I can kind of be opening things uh, up, and then we'll go in and have a look at the different parts. So uh, yeah, here we go. Here's um, eyelashes.
Okay, so there's the track. Uh, I did notice actually um, that I in, in the drum rack in this 909 kit, which is here, um, I had uh, on the return. I had a, you know within within the actual drum rack, um, I had a reverb here, um, which yeah was sending sending to the EMT 140, which is a UAD plug-in and I realized because that's that's not acting up active so uh, I just replaced it with the uh, little plate uh, which is a great plug-in um, sound toys uh, it's not probably probably a, sounds like I kind of need to make it a little bit louder actually but that, that's kind of it's kind of doing doing jobs so there may be a couple of other plugins missing but um, I don't think that matters too much so yeah, let's just go through it. I mean, I think maybe let's start off with the with the OBX. Um, so the the first sound that I uh, had was this, um, which is this bass line. So that kind of bass line and. MPK. So we're in D minor here. But actually, it's using uh, the Dorian scale, so D Dorian, because uh, normally D minor would have that B flat in it um, as the sixth degree of the scale. Um, but actually, it's sharpened, so it just goes to B natural. And so, yeah, so that's kind of the main bass line. And let me just bring up the uh, the actual instrument rack so here we go this is this is the um, OBX and uh, it really is amazing I've actually kind of just put a uh, an instance of it here um, just so we can kind of play through some of the sounds uh, let's just solo it I mean I think it's quite rare to get something that sounds so warm uh, it really is amazing. So, um, if I if we if we look for it, I'm just going to search for it here. The O B. There you go. It says it's by Dat Sounds. So uh, actually, kind of all the um, presets you can't adjust the presets from um, the actual kind of uh, user interface here. You actually have to kind of load them in um, as kind of uh, audio unit presets. I don't know if that's any different with the VST version. Uh, maybe it is, um, but I tend not to use VSTs. I do. I just use audio units for everything. Um, so I mean, just so many, so many uh, presets here, and all you have to do is just sort of double click on it. You know, that's analog sweep. They all kind of load really, really quickly. Um, this is an interesting one. Just to let's run through a few more. Really fat. And what else have we got? Kind of right in Lagos, real kind of YMO, Yellow Magic Orchestra vibes there. great with some reverb on it um, so yeah just definitely go and check that out um, and yeah this is the sound that I hit on for uh, the bass line and um, got a bit of reverb on it um, compressing it slightly as well um, and also I'm kind of mapping the I've mapped uh, the cutoff frequency cutoff filter cutoff uh, to a macro here um, if I just play that Hear the sort of some kind of oscillator sinking sounds great. Um, so yeah, so that's that's that was that, and I was like, oh, okay, that sounds good. Um, then um, I found this sound, uh, which is and it's another OBX sound.
and um, I just played kind of one of my favorite chords which is like a minor nine um, there we go so because it's D that's the root notes D um, and the tonic and I'm playing this shape here so actually it's an inversion of that which is a D minor nine and I'm just taking in the right hand I'm taking that up there then the A up there there we go and then when you vary the cutoff sounds really nice and uh, there's some quite nice sort of syncopation with those two parts um, we'll just play it from here okay. and let's just open up So we've got the cutoff. Uh, you can see the automation there. Looks like I did this before. We had the uh, simplify envelope function uh, in Ableton, which I love. So actually, let's just try that now. Um, there we go. Nice and simple now. Much better. So the other thing I'm doing on this is I'm automating these uh, stabs. Um, I'm basically sending uh, sending to this dub station here, which is a return. It's on return B. Um, so if I just go to mixer, there we go. There's the dub station. Uh, let's just do another simplify envelope of that. There we go. Um, and you can see there that it's it's just giving it a bit of life, really. Uh, The dub station two. It's one of my favourite um, delays. Hey Abby. <laughs> Sorry, I did. I was completely ignoring the uh, the chat there. Hey, um, yes, I'm there. I'm here, and um, yeah, I am at Point Blank. Um, I yeah, I do kind of. I don't teach in the classroom so much now. Um, I uh, kind of, you know. Um, manage the team, manage the academic team. Um, uh, but I still do lots of tutorials, um, you know, things like uh, Friday Forum Live sometimes and um, some videos that go on YouTube. But yeah, I'm still there, I'm loving it. Brilliant team, amazing, amazing place to be. And uh, it's kind of ever growing as well. We're you know, introducing a new degree next year, um, music production and vocal performance, which is gonna be brilliant. Um, but yeah, I'm still there, so great. <laughs> great to have you along um and anyone else that's joined as well so yeah um just ask me some questions whatever i'm just going to go through this is a this is a track of mine that's just come out um and yeah just kind of going through the parts um and yeah i've just been covering the this plugin here which is the the obx and this is these are the kind of main two parts but there's a third part as well which is another obx sound um and this is the kind of main, I uh, suppose, so the melodic hook of the track. I'm just gonna. There we go. So it's a really simple part. Just bring in the uh, keyboards. There we go. So just D, G, and E. And I could have varied it a little bit later on. Um, So as far as effects go, I've got some reverb on there um, and some delay. There we go. Oh, it's asking me to upgrade it. There we go. And there's a couple of automation bits on here. Um, I've got on the instrument. I've got an instrument rack here, and um, I think I'm varying the amount of noise. Let me just see if I can find that. There we go. So, and then also the amount of release as well. So those are the kind of two parameters that um, are being modulated or automated uh, throughout the track. 
So if we listen to all of those three OVX parts together, A slow, A A B. Well, so you're doing the master diploma, brilliant production. Oh, fantastic. So that's really, <laughs> that's that's the kind of main um, crux of the of the track. And um, then, so this, I think I pretty much did all of that just sitting on the sofa, just with the computer keyboard. And then uh, inevitably I thought, well, I need to put a beat to it. Um, so I just got, you know, reach for the 909, which is, uh, which is the sort of standard way to go. Um, and uh, sorry, just slow. Yeah, I so so slow. I um, great to have you along. I I um, started this in 2017, and then kind of left it. Then kind of uh, used it for. I think I used it as some backing music for a point a point blank video, um, and <clears throat> and then left it again. And then thought, oh, actually, I should finish this off. And and um, <clears throat> I think when I made it for the video, I actually extended it out into like an eight or nine minute track. So. Uh, when it came to finishing off, it was actually a case of sort of reducing it down and, and, and editing it and expanding on kind of the different sections. Um, so anyway, yeah, here's the uh, here's the 909 kit, and I'll just bring that up. All standard sounds um, that come with Ableton Live, um, and I've just put some nice big reverb on that rim shot. Um, got some nice reverb on that clap as well. Oh, some yeah, reverb, reverb on that uh, closed hat as well. So I really do like um, trying to kind of use as much of the kit as well. As, 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 I mean, as much as much of the kit as possible um, before kind of entering and finding finding uh, different kits or different sounds to go over the top. Um, because I just think there's so much you can do, um, you know, with kind of reverb and effects and everything and just kind of making it sound good. Um, as far as uh, processing, um, I've got a few things going on here, actually. So um, let me just sort of take everything off and then I'll put it back on. So, so that's kind of the kit on its own without any processing at all. Uh, and let me just... So loop. I'll, I'll loop this bit because it's quite good. It's got those those kind of snare rolls. So the first thing I put on is the drum drum bus. But actually, at the time there wasn't a drum bus, so I just used the glue compressor um, and kind of used this like um, New York style compression, where you can kind of mix in some of the compressed signal with the original sync signal, um, just to kind of give it that pumping sound. So that's kind of the compression on its own which is obviously kind of really, really extreme. But then you kind of mix in a bit of the original signal. But then the drum bus came along and I thought, oh, maybe I don't need the glue compressor. So I put the drum bus on it. And of course, this has got some lovely things. Um, well, actually, I didn't use that much of it on here. I just used a bit of drive. The damp is, ah, the damp is on, which is probably why, why I ended up dialing in more top end. <laughs> Now I realise. Okay, but anyway, anyway, I use the drum bus, and then I use the glue compressor as well to kind of give it more punch. And then I use this UAD uh, Marg EQ, um, which isn't working at the moment because um, I haven't got my UAD Apollo connected. Um, so I've just replaced it with this uh, Lufticus, which is pretty much uh, exactly the same. You know, it's even got the same kind of colours for the the different kind of band bandwidths. Um, and it's got this kind of air as well, you know, this really like really high, uh, high boost for, I've got, this is 5k. Um, so if I put it on, but now I'm realizing that I probably didn't need it because I'm damp, I'm using damping on the drum bus. Ah, maybe it's okay. Anyway, all of that makes makes um, quite a lot of difference, I think. Yeah, 
Yeah, so Schlow, this is it, this whole album project was was that in a nutshell. Basically, was going on going back on tracks uh, over the last ten, sometimes fifteen years, actually, that um, had all just been archived. I'm, I'm quite kind of a good archiver, so I, I, I archive everything I do, um, and I generally create a bounce of everything I do as well, just so I've got that as a reference point. Um, and I sort of went through and I organised everything into years and then went through them and like made aliases of any demo sort of that I liked until I kind of built up about, yeah, 15 to 20 tracks that I was into. Um, and then I set about finding the original projects and then restoring those projects. And some of the plugins are really old. I mean, this was a, this was a classic one where uh, I think this this OBX wasn't working anymore or something. So I had to because it was done on an old computer. So I had to sort of find the original installer and put it in. But yeah, kind of reviving all those tracks. And just because you started something 10 years ago and you never finished it off doesn't mean it's a it's a bad track or it's doesn't it's not worth it's just you never finish I never finished it off and we all know how hard it is to finish tunes off. Um but yeah, I set myself the task of basically finishing I couldn't move on to another tune until I'd finished the one I was working on. Uh and I did that and I ended up getting 14 or 15 tracks which uh, turned into be the album so um yeah <clears throat> um abby is uh possible sample kick from famous songs as in is it okay to sample a kick drum from a famous song is that what you mean uh i've done that <laughs> because no one knows I, I actually did that on the album i i used a, a disclosure kick drum um but i'm sure the disclosure sampled it from somewhere else themselves so uh and obviously uh, you know in the context of the beat and everything it kind of changes and or you eq it and it's everything but um yeah i think i think it's okay and even if i mean i think that's probably the kick drums have always been a real challenge in finding kick that kicks that are original that actually kind of have an impact and um if anything I, I think my album's quite kind of well it's very kick heavy i think that you know the kicks are quite loud but i just really wanted that i really wanted it to be you know, the tracks to be really driving um but yeah the kick in this is just the 909 kit so um there we go that probably would have crashed my computer and my on my original setup but it didn't um, but anyway, yeah, the kick here is just all the 909. So what the other thing that I've done here is, uh, and I always think this is a really important part of drum programming, uh, certainly in the kind of middle stages of production, um, is to actually kind of imagine that you're the drummer and uh, rather than this just being kind of one loop going around, uh, you're actually putting in fills and extra kick drums and extra snares. So I generally always kind of have some um, extra tracks here. And these this is not like an, another instance of the 909. Um, this is just a MIDI track that's, uh, and then you just send it to the track, the 909. And then you have to, you can, you can just pinpoint like any one of those single sounds, but I just uh, pinpoint the 909, the, one, the one, one at the top. Um, and then that means that you're not using up any more CPU or RAM or whatever. Um, it just, it's just going straight to uh, that kit, but you can, it's separating it onto a different MIDI channel. And I really like that because uh, it creates a new clip and I'll just literally uh, do a pass all the way through of just putting things in and then go through and edit them. So uh, if we look at this one here, so these are these are extra kicks. Um, there we go. So wherever you see that coming up, that's all on a separate MIDI track. So it's not getting mixed up. So I don't know. I just like I like kind of having it separate. And then um, again, I've got um, an extra, some extra rim shots coming in here. And they were all just played down live. And I think it's one of those things, it's like, you know, if, if something sounds really weird or jarring, I'll just take it out straight away. Um, but when you listen back to the whole track, the track as a whole, uh, it's you tend to not even notice those things. 
but they are having an impact because they are making it feel interesting and trying to kind of keep the interest all the way through. And it's exactly, that's why a drummer does fills and does, you know, extra kicks and snares and, and crashes and stuff like that. You know, that's why they do it, you know, to make it sound more interesting. Um, so, so yeah, so that's the 909 kit um, and with the extra MIDI on it as well. Um, and then I threw in a loop, uh, which is this one here. So this is a, a very kind of classic loop. And what have I got on here? I've taken off the bottom end. So if we... So it's just, it, what it's doing is it's just giving um, the whole track a bit of a drive and, you know, taking it onto kind of you know, the next level. Yeah, I think it is Groove Jet. But not called that. It's it's just in amongst a whole bunch of loops that I was uh, I acquired from a friend, a producer friend of mine, and um, and had probably Groove Jet got it from that as well. Um, let me just see. Actually, I wonder if I've got because what I normally do is I normally use Recycle. Um, let me just see if I've got that as a Recycle file. Uh, Maybe I didn't. Maybe I just used slice to MIDI for that one. Uh, I can't. I can't find it. So I probably, yeah, I probably just sort of sliced it up. Um, but you can see, you know, all the sounds are all spread, and that just means that you can actually replace sounds as well. So you can kind of make the the loop fit, um, you know, or you can extract certain sounds as well. Uh, I notice I've kind of I've coloured those. Um, why did I colour them? Uh, maybe because I just wanted to bring them. Maybe they're a bit loud. So yeah, yeah. So that's the brilliant thing. And then you can you know you can put effects on individual sounds as well. So you know you can really um, make a loop sound completely different uh, once you start splitting it up and you put it through different. Uh, Different outputs, yeah. Slow, uh, right? Recycle. I still use Recycle now. I, I absolutely love it. I mean, I used to use it with an Akai S three thousand sampler, and uh, with uh, Mesa software, which was the Akai software. Uh, and yeah, I used to kind of you know split the split the split a loop up in in Recycle, and then send it back to Ableton um, via Mesa, and uh, yeah. <laughs> it's the same process. I mean, I still use Slice to MIDI, and I've actually recently found uh, Slice to MIDI like kind of slightly better ways of um, kind of creating that tail at the end of the samples, which is something that I didn't think Ableton could do, and I've realised there's a way of doing that, which is really cool. Um, but I still there's something about there's something about Recycle that's really good. Uh, it's it's generally the the tail at the end, the loop at the end of each kind of sound is really good and and when you import it into Ableton Live it, it retains that which is quite cool um, okay so we've got that um, just other things here we've got some crashes so they they're kind of coming I mean crashes are really important uh, as a way to um, define sections and give energy to the track and I kind of use them uh, quite unsparingly here. In this bit. Um, so, so yeah, that's that. Um, what else have we got? Uh, oh, we've got another kit coming in. So there are three main sections here, and in the third section, the C section, um, I actually bring in an 808 kit. convolution reverb on there so yeah i've got a spring reverb on all that i do love uh, spring reverb um so so yeah that's the uh that's we, we've done the obx um 
we've got some other parts here. Let's take this off solo. Um, so what's this? This is a, uh, I don't even know what this is. Oh, okay, so this is this is a similar thing that I did for that riff where I fed an extra MIDI, a MIDI uh, channel into into that instrument um, and I've, I've felt that that riff was getting a bit boring. Um, so I just went through and then kind of edited, uh, well I just, just did a live take um, and just kind of varied it a little bit. There we go. So I could have just dragged that back onto that track, but I think that was just my sort of process at the time was was keeping them keeping it separate. Um, Abby, so yeah, recycle. Uh, it's it it is software. Um, so uh, it's yeah made by propeller heads, um, and uh, I think yeah it's um, been around for a long long time. And essentially, it's just a way of. Of splitting up you can put in a loop and then it will just chop it up so it will just look at the transients um, and then chop it up and then you can export it as individual samples um, and uh, also it will ex export the MIDI file as well so and then you can actually import that um, into into Ableton uh, Ableton Live and it will kind of yeah just kind of keep 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 the kind of the, the MIDI mapping and everything the same so it's really cool um, Shlo, so how long how long ago did you finish this track and how does it feel diving back in and figuring out how you produced it? Um, so I finished this probably about two months ago uh, in amongst, you know, all the other kind of tracks that I was, I was working on. Um, and yeah, it's, it's you know, I, I think it's, it is amazing how much stuff you forget really. Um, and you, you know, I, I don't think anyone's got a perfect workflow and you know a lot of the time you're just throwing down ideas and putting things in and just you know trying to sort of make it work and yeah I mean I think with all the tracks on the album I got I got to a point where I'd done the arrangement and the arrangement was working um and then and that point I would I went through so the last couple of months I was I was using SoundCloud I created a sort of SoundCloud private playlist purely for myself um as a way that I could kind of walk around with my phone and my AirPods, just listening to all the tracks. You know, I, I always go for like a kind of morning walk, um, and just kind of listening, and then like making notes on things that are gonna that I should change. And then I'd be going back and tweaking things and chopping out eight bars here, four bars there, extending something, putting in a new sound. So yeah, that was the kind of the last. You know, I was using SoundCloud very much for that, and that playlist is still there. Um, and in the end, I kind of you know it, it's now got all the final versions on, and I think I was sharing that sort of pre-promo phase of the album. Um, so yeah, uh, so let's keep going. Uh, what else have we got here? So I've got I've got a Korg mini log um, and I wanted to put some liveness on it. So uh, this is something that I, I wanted to kind of mirror the riff, the main riff. I imagine that I kind of recorded that in, I probably did just use use the MIDI and I've probably got rid of the MIDI file now. But the Korg Minilog's great because it's got this delay on it. It's quite like a sort of tape, tape echo. And this as well, I don't know, I think like, I, these kind of really weird sounds came about. Let me turn off a bit. So this is, I think, you know, uh, I am, I, I'm really into hardware synths um, because of the sort of the randomness that you get from them, um, which can give give the track a lot of character. I never envisaged getting that kind of sound. If we listen to that in context, I'll turn up a bit.
So yeah, it just it's just about textures, and I love the mini log. Uh, I really do uh, for that. Um, hey Toppy, <laughs> thanks a lot. Um, so yeah, Abby, just going back to recycle. Um, I think yeah, the only I mean I'll probably do like a separate stream on on recycle maybe. Um, but the the it hasn't really got more options. Uh, as such, it's just the way that you can extend all the individual um, sort of samples that it creates from the transients so that it very smoothly um, kind of just creates an, a really nice tail. Um, so I won't go into it now because I'll, there's other stuff I want to go into, but I think that, that it's, I, I think pretty much you can do everything um, that you can do with right with with what's available in Ableton Live that you can do in Recycle. But that could be quite a good video, you know, like Recycle versus uh, chopping up, you know, Recycle versus Slice to MIDI. I think that'd be quite a good uh, thing to do, actually. And we can kind of go through the processes. So I'm going to make a note of that. I think that's a good, that's a good video to do. Uh, OK, so there's another Korg mini log part here. What's that? Oh, yeah. So that's one that I played in live, I think. And, and I reckon this is pretty much just playing down live stuff, ideas, and then just taking the bits that I liked. And I did that quite a lot on the album in the end with some of my hardware since I've got a Nord modular, I've got a Super JV, um, and I was just like, okay, I'm just going to play some stuff down live over the whole track and then go and edit, edit the bits I like, you know, and they end up just being so important, I think, in the, in the kind of the, you know, in just the development of the track and keeping interest up. So we just listen to that part in context. <laughs> Um, so Shlo, did I do my own mix and master? I mixed it myself, but I didn't master it. Uh, I got my friend Simon Cotsworth, who runs my website, which unfortunately you can't see, apparently. <laughs> um, but anyway, he is a top engineer. I've kind of known him for a long time. He uh, is used to be Incognito's mix engineer. And um, yeah, he uh, had recently, I've mentioned this actually at the start of the stream. Um, he, let me see if I've got... Have I still got iTunes up? No. Anyway, he um, recently became kind of Apple master authorized or credited, whatever. And he was, he offered to to master the album for me. And I was just so honored to have him do that. Um, and yeah, and it was, I think I, I've pretty much always mastered stuff myself before, um, just kind of using software. And it's quite a traumatic process. And I was, I was in getting ready to spend a good month on the mastering of this. Um, putting every track into a DAW project and, um, you know, kind of just trying to make it all match and whatever. And he just did that really quickly. Uh, he's, he's got the setup for it now. And um, he, yeah, that was the, the key thing, was just making, making all the tracks kind of work together and making all the levels consistent and the EQ. And he asked me for lots of reference points as well. I was kind of sending him... Uh, you know, tracks that I'd love, I love the sound of like Future Sound of London and Lone and Mr. Fingers and, you know, trying to get that, you know, trying to get that sound. And um, yeah, <clears throat> so I can't, I, I will always get stuff out. I'll always outsource mastering from now on. Uh, I think it's just such, such a good thing. And it's also, it makes you feel better. I think when you release something that it's not just all you, <laughs> you've, you've had other people involved. Uh, I think it's a, it's, it's a, it's a nice kind of, yeah, a nice feeling. Um, okay, so we're nearly we're nearly there now. Um, there's a few other things uh, I've got here. I've got a swish sound. Always love a swish, and this is my favourite plugin, the Tal Uno LX. Um, uh, this is just kind of using the envelope here. There we go. I'm messing with the program there. So that's uh, and that's got a nice echo on it with the ping pong delay. I mean, without it, it's that. Still sounds good, but then you put the ping pong on. Sounds great. Um, and what else have we got? Uh, we got... 
Ah, so this is a killer one. So before I get into this, I'm just going to look. I've got another question here. Um, so is the session uh, the final mix, final mix version? Yeah, this is this is it. I mean, I'm, I'm messing around with it a bit now. Um, so uh, there are a few things that are changing, and also I haven't got my UAD plugins. There were a few UAD plugins because I'm using my UAD for the streaming streaming computer. That's the next thing to address. Um, uh, so do you tend to do it in the same session you produce the track in or prefer to bounce stems and mix them fresh? Um, no, I always um, I always just mix it in the session I'm working on. I think it's because it, I think it's, it, there's definitely something to, something to be said for mixing out the stems and mixing separately, definitely. And I know a lot of people that do that. They kind of will program everything in Ableton or Logic um, and then bounce out and mix it in Pro Tools or get someone to mix it in Pro Tools. Um, but I tend to be wanting to tweak right up to the last minute. Uh, and that often will be a case of, um, I don't know, just kind of changing the feel of something or um, just putting in an extra sound here and there. And what I, what I would want to avoid would be to, you know, bounce out the stems, start mixing in another door and then start adding more programming to that. <laughs> you know, I think it's like, what's the point? But I think you know, there's there there probably is something to be said sonically for bouncing out stems. Um, but yeah, no, I tend to just mix it all in the box, um, you know, with what I've got. Um, so this sound now, this now I actually first created this uh, for a deconstruction I did um, way back in 2015 of Clean Bandit and and Jess Glynn's Real Love, and. Uh, this was a Friday forum live I did for Point Blank, um, and they had this sound basically, and I was like, oh, how can I re how can I recreate that in in Ableton Live? Um, so that was my little project, and let me just kind of get rid of some of the, pl the plugins that I'm not using. Um, so if I just take everything off here. So essentially, this is. Um, it's a combination of, do I even need that? It's a combination of the chord device um, playing the Tal Uno LX. I wonder if, if I play, I oh, know it won't, it won't show me the, uh, the notes it's playing. So it's basically playing a chord, um, even though this is a monophonic sound, but the chord is affecting the arpeggiator um, so it's playing a third and a fifth. So one, two, three, three, four, five, five, six, seven. Okay, so it's playing these notes and then it's feeding it into the arpeggiator. Which is playing in steps of four um, at a distance of an octave, but then you put the chord in front of it. Great, and then you put a bit of reverb on it, and then you put a bit of echo on it. And it sounds great. And this is what I definitely been find finding with a lot of the deconstructions that I did where I would spend quite a bit of time trying to create these racks and get sounds um, in that I'll then remember I used that sound and think that would work re really well in in a track so um, yeah I, you know there's this thing about deconstructions where it's it's not about just trying to copy what someone does but it's trying to get inside it and find out what are the beautiful things that are being done in that track and how could I maybe incorporate them into my track, you know? So, uh, yeah, it was, it was a nice, a nice thing to bring in. So that's that. Um, we're nearly nearing the end now. Um, there's, uh, the old Selena. I love a high string, uh, held string pedal. That comes in here. So actually, I did do um, some work on this in a Twitch stream. 
uh, a while ago. I think it was a couple of months ago. I think it was the f- it was the first day I'd got my hair cut after not having a haircut for about five months. And um, yeah, and uh, so I, I kind of worked on three tracks in a stream uh, in an afternoon, and uh, this was one of them. And uh, yeah, so I kind of got help from the people that was that were in, in that stream session in that uh, Twitch session. And one of the things was I added was this really nice pad here. Just using the wavetable. And it's kind of that with the Selena. So listen in context. So there's one more part to talk about, uh, which is uh, this one, which is nothing special really. It's just an arpeggio. And again, I think that was something that I sort of did live in the Twitch session as well. Put a bit of echo on it. And what am I automating? A couple of things, the filter cut off. And what else? Oh, yeah, panning as well. So I put a bit of panning on this, which is quite nice at the end. So there we go. There's the project. Um, let me just save that. So uh, thanks everyone for for um, watching that through. So what I want to announce is that I'm going to do a little remix challenge of this track, and um, I just think it's there's not really it's not really a competition. I think it's more like let's just see what everyone can do, and I want to keep it to uh, the the people that are watching at the moment, and maybe anyone that's that's watching back. Um, so I'm going to actually quit live now and just show you where the parts are. So um, what I did yesterday is uh, I went through and bounced out all the parts here. Um, and if I just, I'm going to load up Logic, uh, break from the norm, don't normally work in Logic. Um, but just to sort of show you how, how they're going to look, um, and I'll show you how you can download them in a minute. I've created a Google form and everything. And so just loading up Logic. Here we go. Uh, let's create a track. So this is what this is what they'll look like when you download them. Um, and it's the same process in Logic or Ableton. I don't know in, in any other doors as well, is that when you drag the stems, um, you have press command um, and let's just put them there we go it will say create new tracks or use existing tracks so we're going to create new tracks there we go and it's it's uh, adding them in there uh, we don't need that first track cool and it's also in the title of the folder it says the bpm it's 123 bpm so we can uh, we can adjust that and then So what I tend to do with with uh, stems when I'm doing it properly is that I'll I'll kind of bring up um, every every part that I'm bouncing to zero dB so that there's as much signal there as possible. With this, I've done it really really sort of simple where I've just kept the actual level of each track um, so that when you when you play it, it will be essentially kind of be the mix. Um, and if I just press X there. So where did the where did the name eyelashes came from? So that was a, a very last minute thing where I was going through trying to kind of come up with names because this was originally called uh, OB OBX no OXDB Beauty and um, OBDA Beauty and uh, I was just doing kind of like typing typing words into Google and um, thesaurus and all those kind of things and um, 
the word eyelash, I typed in beauty and the word eyelash came up and I thought, oh, that's such a weird, strange name for a track. Uh, and somehow fits, I don't know, there was some, maybe it's the kind of the the um, the lightness of it or something. I just thought, ah, oh, it kind of works as a, as a title. Um, so, yeah, in the kind of SEOs, it will probably come up as like in lots of sort of fashion searches or something now. Um, maybe that's a good thing. Who knows? Uh, <laughs> um, so look, here we go. Here are the parts. Got the kit. All the parts, all the things that I've been going through. So I'd love everyone to have a go at doing a remix of this. And who knows, um, maybe, you know, we could, it could be something that could come out on the label. I don't want to promise anything. I think we should sort of see how it go. Have fun. That's what it's all about. I don't really, I don't really want a competition. I don't, I don't, I don't want people to compete with each other. I just want people to have fun um, with, with the parts. So... Um, let me just hide that uh, and go here. So what I've done is I've created a Google form because rather than just kind of giving everyone a link uh, to uh, just to, to a zip file, um, I quite like to kind of know who's actually working on it and uh, who's kind of involved. Um, and I've done a little bit of a, a kind of thing where I just, you know, um, and a bit of an agreement because I don't want these to be randomly uh, shared. So if, if you're going to do, if you're going to, get these parts, I'd like you to kind of keep them for yourself. Uh, don't share them, um, just use them for your own kind of remix. Uh, so I've created a Google form and this will basically take you through a few steps. You have to put in your email, your name. Um, it'd be great if you could provi provide uh, some links to some music that you've done as well. Um, uh, Craig, sorry, I'm just looking at uh, Craig. Uh, can I do this project in Ableton? Yeah, yeah, it's fine. I'm not, I, I'm not gonna be having uh, I don't want anyone to sub submit projects. Uh, it's just going to be submitting the kind of final mix. So that's what we're going to be listening. So it doesn't matter. And they're audio files as well. They're stems. Uh, so you can you can load them into whatever DAW you want to use. Reaper, you know, FL Studio, whatever. Reason. <laughs> uh, are there any others? Don't know. Uh, Cubase. Cubase on an Atari. Um, really, you can a Garage Band, of course, you could do it on Garage Band, you can do whatever, whatever you want, Garage Band on, on your iPhone. Um, so, yeah, it's just about the, uh, the end product. Um, and then, yeah, I'll, what I'll do is I haven't set this up yet, but I'll create a, another, another Google form um, for everyone to submit the files to. So, uh, I'll do this communication through Discord. So, you should see um, links in the description to my Discord server. So, uh, join that and then I'll sort of carry on this this communication through that so here we go let me uh, let me just uh, share the link to the Google form um, and I'll put it in the chat hopefully you'll be able to see it so I've got two keyboards here it's a bit crazy uh, so here we go here is the link um, to the form uh, so that will allow you just go through there's a few questions Go through that, fill out, fill, fill out the answers, and you'll get to the point, the end, where you can download the parts. And I was thinking maybe a month to work on this. I don't want to do do it too quickly. Um, so we'll keep we'll keep the dialogue going on through to, through Discord, and then we'll have a grand listening session, and we'll listen through everyone's remixes, and it will just be fantastic. Um, and any style you want, you can slow it down, you can speed it up, you can. Uh, get a vocal on it. Hey, you know what happened yesterday? It was amazing. I was, I was listening to uh, on, I just had to kind of pop out to Iceland to get some sweet corn. And I was listening to one of my tracks uh, just because I still kind of get a buzz from listening to it off uh, Spotify. Um, so I was walking in, in the street and then someone was, there was someone was practicing saxophone um, in their bedroom um, on Stoke Newton High Street. And it was, but it was like really loud. So it was like really broadcasting across the street. And unbelievably, uh, the person was playing in the same key as the track as one of my tracks. Um, it was Jam State, and it was like it sounded so good as well. So I was like, okay, I've got to do a version of the game with with sax on it. Um, so look, hopefully that works um, for you. If it doesn't, just hit me up on Discord, and we'll and we'll um, we'll go through it there. But yeah, I think what I'll do is I'll, yeah, I'll set about a month to do this, um, and then we'll have a big listening session as a ski Sunday, um, and we can listen to what we all, we've all been doing. So yeah. Have a good day, rest of the day, Sunday. Thanks for um, 
checking this out and uh, have a great week. And I will uh, speak to you very soon. Take care.